On March 31st of 2023, I pulled in my 2021 Honda Civic Type R to attempt to build the world's first all-wheel drive Civic Type R. I knew going into this build, I would kind of have to have the unlimited budget mindset to something like this, being that I've never done it before myself, no one else has ever done it. I had no idea what it was gonna cost. I've never even motor swapped a car in my life, meaning take a motor out of something else and stuff it in something it ain't supposed to be in. That was the first for me. And then on top of that, all wheel drive converting something was also a huge undertaking for myself, being that I had no experience whatsoever. So with that being said, I knew there's gonna be a ton of things that come up, all the expensive things that come up during the build. So when I jumped into it, I knew this is gonna be expensive, but I wanna stick it through to the end to see what I can actually create. And sitting here in front of the car, I'm very, very proud of it. And uh, I was not wrong. There was a lot of things that came up during the build that I did not foresee when I had the initial vision of the car, but it's done, it's running, it's driving, it's complete. And today I wanna break down exactly what it costs to build the world's first all wheel drive Civic Type R. Now I have this broken down into eight different categories. We have the engine build, we have electronics, we have drivetrain stuff, we have a transfer case build, transmission, random swap stuff, fueling, induction, and then the cars I had to purchase to actually make this happen. So let's start with, let's start with cars. I would say it's about a year, year and a half ago, I bought this car. I actually bought it on auction. It was completely totaled and I paid like eight grand for it. All said and done after the rebuild, I was into the Type R itself, getting it back to just a 100% OEM spec was $28,525. That's for a running, driving, completely stock 2021 Type R with like 10,000 miles. Rebuilding it myself. Just parts, no labor, of course, because I did it myself. Now, a lot of the older Honda guys, when they go to swap their Honda, say like my other EM1 that's all drive swapped, you use a lot of parts off of a CRV. Now, of course, a lot of the stuff from an older CRV would not fit a newer Type R like this, being that the complete generation differences. So what I did is I went out and bought a wrecked 2019 CRV that was all drive, thinking I could use a ton of parts off of that car on this car to make the build process go a little bit easier. And thankfully I was right. We were able to use the front subframe. Of course, we had to modify it. We were able to use the steering rack. We were able to use some of the stuff for the rear drive train as well. So that car purchase, being that I bought it wrecked and got a pretty good deal on it, I paid 7,500 bucks for the 2019 CRV. So that puts the car total for the CRV and the Type R at $36,025. Now let's start going through, breaking down each build item by item. First off, we have an engine build. This is a K24. This would come in like uh, Acura TSX. It's a K24 A2. I bought the engine used from a local wrecking yard for $1,000. I put it in the car. This thing leaked a ton of oil, just, it was a big giant mess. So I ended up pulling it out and I decided while I had it out, I'm gonna go ahead and build it. Little did I know, $10,185 later, that it cost that much. So here's what we got in the engine. We have a 50 degree intake gear, ACL bearings, ATI damper, Brian Crower camshafts, the BC head gasket, BC rods, BC springs with titanium retainers, BC valve keepers, BC valves, CP pistons, drag cartel, damper bolt, drag cartel flywheel bolt kit, drag cartel timing kit, drag cartel timing tensioner, HPT oil pump kit, coil radiator, K-tune coil cover, K-tune coolant neck, K-tune filler neck, K-tune pulley kit, K-tune valve cover, NGK plugs. I had to buy a couple accessories off of like an 06 RSX, I think is what I used. So I had to buy, I bought, an AC compressor, a starter, a water pump. We utilized a Z3 oil pan, aluminum oil pan with the rear mount on it, which we desperately needed for this car. Speed factory head stud kit, the L19s, and speed factory valve stem seals, bringing the engine total alone $10,185. I can already see things I'm missing. I don't have machine work in here, stuff like that. These numbers may be a touch on the slimmer side, but I listed down 99% of the things. So complete engine build, $10,185. Next up, let's go ahead and move on to the transfer case build. Now this is a CRV transfer case. I think it's 02 to 06. Buying the OEMT case itself was 400 bucks. Of course, you guys know, if you followed the build, that thing did not last long at all. We scattered it immediately. So the entire T case includes PPG hypoids, Drag cartel, billet case, PPG transfer gears, PPG transfer shaft, TK shim kit, and I'm currently having the TK built. The one that's in the car right now is just another OEM one I had laying around. So having the TK built, being that it has to be shimmed perfectly, the whole entire TK build was 
and $200. I thought Hondas were cheap. I was wrong. Transmission build. Same trans as the T-Case 02 to 06 CRV. The OEM tranny was 800 bucks. Put that thing in the car, it wouldn't go into fourth gear. Some other random stuff. So I pulled that, decided to build that as well. The build includes a BF gear, straight cut one through four, BF gear, final drive, EP3 selector, to reverse the, the shift selection, Translab sixth gear cuff, M factory LSD, and Syncrotech carbon synchros for a total of the transmission build alone of $7,900. Drivetrain, this is gonna include stuff like clutch, axles, viscous, rear diff, stuff like that. We have the shifter cable mount, Speed Factory U-joint kit, viscous mount, Wago van, rear diff and viscous is what I'm running in this car. If you're building the all drive Honda, you know that's definitely the way to go. I was shying away from that at first just because it was so expensive. The Wago Van rear diff and the viscous alone cost three grand used out of like a 1988 to 91, I believe it is, Wago Van. Uh, CRV rear hubs, which we had to severely modify to fit this car. We started out with an ACT six puck. That did not last very long being that this car made like 800 wheel. So we went to an ACT Scent Iron race clutch. And then as far as axles go, this was a very, very tough one. I wasn't sure exactly what I wanted to do there. So I started out with 06 RSX Type S front axles, but they would not fit the Type R front hub. So what I did was I used the RSX inner, the Type R outer, and then I had custom shafts built to a specific length. So that's what we did for the front. Now the rear, I started out with the insane shafts, rear axles. Try to put them on the car. Thankfully, they were splined correctly for the rear hub, but they were quite a bit too short. So same concept. We used our inners, our outers, and then had the custom shaft built. So in total, axles alone, we are looking at 200 bucks for the RSX front axles, 500 for the insane shafts, rear axles. Just the custom shafts alone was $2,000. Expensive. Custom driveline. There's a local shop that does it here. Pretty reasonably priced. The entire driveline was 800 bucks. We were running the Insane Shafts half shaft. I rebuilt the Viscous. Also went ahead and did a couple like suspension upgrades I just tossed in here. So we have the, the adjustable white line lower ball joints, EV6 compliance bushings, EV6 front control arm bushings for a grand total of just random driveline stuff, axles, clutches, drivetrain, junk of 12,835 bucks. Ugh. Electronics, it is what it sounds like. Bosch throttle body, electronic boost control solenoid, an OEM wiring harness. This car is running a bunch of Haltech stuff. So we have the Haltech Elite 2500, Haltech wideband, Haltech dash, the Haltech adapter. That was all expensive, of course. K-tuned engine harness, OEM coils, 350Z gas pedal, the flex fuel kit, and all of the other sensors we added on the car, boost, oil pressure, etc., for a grand total of just electronics of $6,000. $100. <sighs> Random swap stuff. This is going to include motor mounts, radiator, some other CRV stuff I had to buy because the CRV that I bought was wrecked. So a lot of the components I needed, we actually couldn't use because they were damaged. So total random swap stuff, rear mount, battery box, all the AN bungs and lines and fittings for like the catch can, the breather stuff. We have AN lines for AC, intercooler piping material, exhaust material. I started out with a motor mount kit made for, let's say like an EM1. And then of course we had to greatly modify it to fit a Type R. So started out with that. Relocated the battery into the trunk. So we had all the wiring and material for that. I painted and tubbed the engine bay. The front subframe and the steering rack, we both needed the electric rack out of the CRV. Those are both damaged on the CRV. So I had to buy both of those again. Expensive, uh, 1400 bucks for the pair of those. This car is running all dash three or dash four braided lines from the ABS module to all the calipers. And then a ton of bolts that I ordered in from McMaster car for a total random swap parts of $6,130. <sighs> this is getting expensive. Next up, fueling. All right, this is gonna include the fuel cells, the FCST made by Radium, let's run through it. Radium FCST, what this is, is a, it's called a fuel cell surge tank. So it's a nice unit that goes inside of a fuel cell and it acts as a surge tank. So it has three pumps on it, it has a lift pump, which pumps fuel into the surge tank and then two pumps in there that push it to the rail. So three Walbro 450 total with the FCST, 1100 bucks, that doesn't sound right. I was a little bit off. It's about 1300 bucks for the FCST with all the pumps. I built the fuel cells here myself 
That was $500 in material alone just to build those fuel cells. Aluminum is freaking expensive. I didn't have any way to bend the material here, so I had to pay for that. Fuel lab regulator, Dash 8 feed with the Dash 6 return lines, K2 fuel rail, fuel cell foam, and topped it off with a set of ID2000 injectors for a grand total. Not bad. A very nice fuel system for $3,390. Moving on to the best. This is how you make the jam. Induction. This is gonna include turbo, intercooler stuff. So let's start out with the turbo. It's a 6466 Gen 2, $2,400. Speed factory exhaust manifold. Very beautiful, nice unit. Sidewinder manifold. Unfortunately, we had to greatly modify that and I was not comfortable modifying that. So that guy right there is the only thing I had to pay for for fab work. Everything else I fabbed on the car myself. Just to modify the exhaust manifold alone, being that it had to be done perfect. So I hired the best shop in the world to do it. 14. 50 to modify the exhaust manifold. Intercooler core, we're running a Treadstone. I think it's a four or four, either a four or four and a half inch intercooler core. Tile BOV, tile 60 millimeter wastegate, skunk to center feed intake manifold, and then turbo feed with the restrictor in the filter and a turbo return line for a total of induction cost of $8,210. Am I missing anything? I believe that is it. Now keep in mind, this does not include all of the foul work to build this car. It took me seven months of working every single day on this thing, and I worked a lot. I worked every day, morning till night. I calculated around 1,200 hours to build this car. Of course, that's a rough calculation. I didn't have a timer going when I was building it, but you gotta keep in mind, I did not know how to weld aluminum. I had no idea how to weld stainless. I had to learn all the TIG welding things. I had to learn wiring because we completely tucked the bay. I had to learn a ton of things. So not including fab. We're looking at a grand total of $96,975. That makes me cry for a Honda. Now granted, it is one of one. It's an insane car. When I initially set out to build it, I had a very, very specific goal. I wanted it to be fast. I wanted it to look good. And I wanted every single OEM function and feature to work with the car. And that includes power windows, power doors, power locks, AC, heat, of course, all the lights to work. I wanted this thing to drive and feel like a stock type R but just be ridiculously fast, which it definitely is, and all-wheel drive, which it definitely is. I want it to be somewhat quiet, which it definitely is. It does have a full exhaust. I didn't, I didn't do a hood exit or nothing like that. So yes, this is a very, very expensive Honda at 96K, not including fab. Now, if you guys are curious, anything about fab work, this is exactly what we had a fab. Keep in mind, a fab shop would charge 130, 140, 150 buck an hour to do all this stuff. We had to fab two fuel cells, completely modify the rear subframe, completely modify the front subframe, figure out drive line and axle lengths and spline count and spline depth and spline angle and all that good stuff. Motor mount and trans mount fab, exhaust from the turbo all the way to the back, wastegate dump, drive shaft hoop, intercooler piping, we had to modify the firewall, extend three different wiring harnesses, tub the engine bay, modify the transmission casing, modify the rear hubs. The car's converted to 5 and 114 from 5 and 120. We had to paint the bay. And of course, this isn't really fab, but we had to build the engine, build the trans. And let's say at a conservative rate, my 1200 hours at let's say $120 an hour is cheap for a high-end fab shop. That's 144 grand in just fabric alone. You guys might think that sounds crazy, but if you look at my EM1, which is a shop that did that, I would have paid to have do this. I was initially gonna have them do it, but then I wanted the challenge of just doing it myself. Fabric alone on the all-wheel drive EM1 was $30,000 alone. Straight Motorsports, the best fab shop around, this is what they did. Modified water pump, custom 10 and catch can, turbo manifold, hood exit, intercooler piping, six gallon fuel cell, drive shaft hoop, shifter mount, and staging brake mount. Those few things from a high-end fab shop was 30 grand alone. So if you Chunk in on top of that, all the all wheel drive swap stuff, motor mounts, the full exhaust, all that stuff, it, it would add up to a fair amount. But we didn't pay for that, so my cost total in this car was 96 and some change. Now there's a couple little things on the car that I still wanna finish up. The factory start button, I want that to get working, and the factory AC controls. That's about it. I love that. Oh. Radio is a must to get working as well. I love that the majority of the sound on this car comes from the drivetrain. These straight cut gears are a definite pleasure to listen to. A lot of my cars, 
you hear, all the sounds are from the exhaust or the turbo. This car, it has exhaust sounds, it has turbo sounds, but it really does have the straight cut sound, which is so fun to drive. still running a stock key case. I don't really beat on this car a whole lot. It is turned down right now to only 19 pounds, which is just wastegate pressure. Um, so yeah, it's not all that quick. It's making about 480, 500 maybe right now. It's still fun though. is a pretty good number for the street. It still hooks, even on these cheap tires, it does hook pretty good. And you know you ain't gonna be breaking transfer cases and transmissions and axles at 500 wheel. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm gonna wrap it up right here. You guys probably won't see this car on the channel for a minute because starting either tomorrow or the following day, I'm starting on a massive project. Something that is even, I wouldn't say bigger than this, but it's a lot of work. I don't know if anything's ever gonna challenge me as much as this car did, but the project we're starting, let me just say the Evo boys are gonna be excited. Hope you enjoyed. Peace out my good friends and I'll see you boys in the next episode.